Various types of columns are used in commercial distillation and they all have their pros and cons. Columns made for home distillation copy these commercial columns, but home distillers don't usually have access to the kind of control systems that are necessary to make them work optimally, and this overshadows the advantages and disadvantages of the different types. In short, in home distillation, money does not buy performance, it buys tolerance of imprecise control. A packed column is a hollow tube filled with some kind of packing material whose purpose is to allow vapour to flow up and liquid to flow down and increase the surface area for their interaction. For home distillation, packed columns are the cheaper option. They can be packed with things like gravel, broken pottery, marbles or commercial products like saddles or rashic rings. Spiral prismatic packing has particularly good properties but it's quite expensive. Another advantage of packed columns is that they are flexible because the effective stages can move up and down smoothly depending on the thermodynamic conditions. So for example, with a packed column running over a pot still, early in the distillation run the heat loss from the column may dictate that the first stage requires maybe a third of the column height, and later on it moves up to occupy maybe three quarters of the column. The idea of a distillation column is that gravity draws the liquid downwards while differential pressure drives the vapour upwards to get separation. Flooding occurs when the upward vapour flow is so fast that its wind drags the liquid with it. Weeping is the opposite. Optimal operation of the column requires that the downward flow of liquid is retarded by the upcoming vapour to give sufficient time for vapour-liquid interaction. If the upgoing vapour flow rate is too slow, then the liquid will drain down too fast before reaching equilibrium with the vapour. Packed columns are more prone to both weeping and flooding than other types, but they have the greatest yield for a given column size, and also the lowest resistance to vapour flow, so require low vapour pressure. Another difficulty with packed columns is that they don't lend themselves easily to draw points where liquid can be drawn off part way up. In a sieve tray column, there are a series of trays with holes drilled in them. There is a weir arrangement so that the liquid builds up on the tray and overflows the weir. The vapour flows up through the sieve holes to interact with the liquid. This is more resistant to weeping and flooding than packed columns, though both can still occur. With high vapour flow rates, bubbles and atomised liquids can be drawn up to the next level, and with low vapour flow rates, liquid falls down through the sieve holes, reducing the level of liquid above the tray and the amount of interaction. Their advantage over packed columns is that they have a wider range of vapour flow rates that they can tolerate. The disadvantage is that they are more intricate to build than packed columns and are therefore more expensive, and they also offer less area for liquid vapour interaction than packed columns, and so have lower yield. Bubble caps are like sieve trays, with trays spaced throughout the column. Their advantage over sieve trays is that they do not weep at all. That again extends the range of vapour flow rates over which they can operate optimally. This is the basic setup. It's like a weir, the same as the sieve trays, but the bubble caps are arranged to form a U-tube system so that the liquid level does not fall below the weir even with low vapour flow rates. A disadvantage is that for a given surface area of tray, they have less interaction between the vapour and liquid, so lower yield than sieve trays. Another is that the complexity of the design makes them even more expensive than sieves. So with this increasing complexity from packed columns to sieve trays to bubble caps, you have increasing costs, and what you're paying for is widening the range of vapour flow rates over which the column can operate. But if you can operate with precision, then the costs are not only the financial outlay, but also productivity. So if you're well off and want a good vodka with a system that's forgiving, then use bubble caps. If you're poor but clever, use a packed column. And if you're wavering between the two, use sieve trays. And before I go, what you're seeing here is a Bonnie Mammon column. That is, a column made out of Bonnie Mammon jam jars. It works in a comparable way to a bubble cap tray column, but was designed partly for low cost and partly to allow the stages to be thermally isolated from each other for experimental purposes. Though as it turns out it works quite well. Perhaps I'll say more about it if anyone's interested.